Ooh, ho, and a bottle of rum. Okay, all right, where are we? We should be up and running, making sure I'm on time. And uh, if I'm on time, then everything should be good. The sound check is done. Good, I can hear myself. Fabulous. It's my painting day. It's my chill out day. So <clears throat> I'm painting miniatures and talking Dungeons and Dragons today. Uh, if you're re-watching this, which I don't know that most people would be re-watching this sort of thing, but if they, you are, the start time will be down in the description when I have this thing published. At some point it'll be published by YouTube. Uh, you will be able to chat along with me. You don't have to wait to the very end. You can just chat as I paint, because I tend to do that. I've set myself up. I'm now surrounded by lights, microphones, screens, and a camera. Wow. Oh, blimey. But um, it should give me just enough space to actually paint. So let's start. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and this is my painting day. And I'm painting the Roper miniature that we made quite some time ago. I made it last year. So I decided it was time to paint it. Since my painting skills have been pretty bad, I thought we would have a go at doing that today. Get me up to speed. I went and bought some more paints so I have a few colors that I don't have to mix up. I could just put them out and it's done. So that's what we're gonna do today. Very, very simple. And over to screen. That's it. I shouldn't have to do very much other than that. And we're ready to go. Let's make sure I have my water close by. So I've already sprayed it. It's already sprayed grey. I've used the fine surface primer for plastic and metal light grey. And this looks like a, a Tamiya pro product. I've been told this was the best thing to use. And that would advice I got from Armel from Vagabond Games in Auckland. And I just recently purchased myself some um, Terra Matte Brown, uh, which is a flat earth colour. And that hopefully will make it a lot easier for me to actually do this today. Alright, so let's grab a brush and shake, shake, shake. I've found that these paints, these are uh, Vallejo. Hopefully I've pronounced it correctly this time. These Vallejo paints really need a good hard shake. I've been told I need to get myself some ball bearings and drop a ball bearing into them to help use as a shaker. Particularly with the metallic colours, they separate apparently. I found all the colours separate, but apparently they, those are the worst ones. And I've just recently bought myself some more paints. I've got myself some green, gold, purple for the purple worm that I'll be painting at some point. Uh, I picked up uh, what else was it? Um, I got myself some. What do you call it? The brown. The brown, the terracotta I was talking about a second ago. So, yes. So, I'm just going to pretty much coat this thing with black fairly quickly. And I'm, I'm not really going to try to water down the paint to start off with because there's a lot of detail on it. What I'm going to do is I've discovered is if I put, particularly when it doesn't matter about the detail too much, is I just put it on fairly thick and then go back over with a watered down version of the paint to get into all the crevices that I'm having trouble getting into. So that's the plan for today. And which means I'm going to have to use quite a bit of paint. It's a big surface area to cover, quite a lot to actually coat in a short space of time. So feel free, if you want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, doesn't matter whether you're a player or a dungeon master, or you just want to talk about nothing in particular, I'm happy to do that as well. If I'm um, not quite positioned in the right place for you to see what's going on, you need to let me know, because I'm not attaching this uh, to a, a holder this time. It's just too big. And I, I have zoomed in so you would be able to see, you know, pretty much what's going on. Oh, there we go. I'm, sm I'm more on the screen than I was before. Now, I figured out what happened yesterday. It sounds strange, but with the, the questions and answers on the Lost Mine of Fandelva, I had definitely scheduled it. It was live streamed, scheduled for 12 p.m. New Zealand Standard Time. I know I remember now that I checked it to make sure and at, at night when I did it, it said 13 hours to live stream. What I think has happened is that YouTube has changed the time on me. And I think it was because there were two other D&D channels live streaming at the same time 
And I think they honestly thought the best thing they could do was to change that start time so that they had content that was live at different times of the day, which is very, very annoying. And I honestly think that is what took place. And because my channel is the smaller of the three channels that were going live, they've selected a time that I tend to live stream, which is 8 p.m. at night. That, honestly, is what I think actually took place. I know that sounds hugely conspiracy theory sort of stuff and, and, and just nutty, but I actually think that took place. I think that was, I've heard of it taking place before for other people, but I've never experienced it myself. Probably because I, you know, usually I'm the only person live streaming at the time, but um, there's been some overlaps recently, I've noticed. How's it going, Aaron? Well, if it isn't Frederick Wheeler, yes, Fred Wheeler is here at the right time. I was just explaining to everybody what I thought had happened to yesterday's live stream that was all sort of messed up and I'm kind of wondering if I need to change the Lost Mine of Thandalvar questions and answers to a general Dungeons and well Dungeons and Dragons DM questions and answers once a month rather than being so specific and just stick with doing the topics on the Lost Mine of Thandalvar that I've been talking about. Uh, certainly feedback from anybody in the chat who is a dungeon master uh, whether I should just go with advice for dungeon masters rather than specifically that adventure. I was just a little bit concerned that I didn't, you know, I wanted to try and cover everything with regard to that adventure. And uh, yeah, I'm starting to think, considering last yesterday's was such a short one and there were so few questions coming through, if any, really. Aaron, I missed the start because I was intensely designing new magic items. Ooh, what are you designing, um, Aaron? What sort of magic items are you designing? Are these the sort of magic items that uh, players will find? They won't know that it's magical other than they've cast a tech magic and it gives off a strange aura. They don't know what the aura is. They don't know what it is because, of course, they haven't cast Identify. <laughs> when I saw the the D and D uh, Mimi on that particular um, topic, I, I just had to laugh because I've had the players do that to me a few times, particularly with um, magic items that are cursed. Because oh, yep, it's detecting as magical, but you don't know what the school of magic is because the feature that it imparts on them, they can't pick up because you can't pick up the um, the aspects of a a cursed item so um, they're like eh, what does that mean oh what's that Aaron the lonely wizard's cloak what does the lonely wizard's cloak actually do does that uh, what cuddle up to the to the wizard is it like um, Dr. Strange's cloak wraps around them stays with them close cuddle it while they're asleep that sort of stuff or something else Okay, let's get some paint in the middle of the mouth there, which is sort of hard to get at. I do apologize if my hand gets in the way, you need to say, Fred, your hand's in the way. Okay, all right, so I've, I've done that. I'm going to grab some water. I was trying to make sure it's just a small amount, but here, <laughs> it's not always the case. Um, and then water down this so I can go back over and get it where I need it to be which is all over. There we go, it's working. It's like, oh, I've shown up to watch Fred paint the rope up black for an hour. I'm, that's, I'm gonna be here for about an hour. After that, I'm gonna go get back to work with my pre-recorded videos, make sure I upload some more stuff, put it in the queue for a rainy day. I think I've been working on monk stuff What's that, Aaron? Um, a cloak that is sentient. Use a command word to make it float behind you. Uh, um, become a cloak of smothering. Ooh. And would an, would add AC as a reaction. Oh, okay. Kind of based on um, Doc Strange. Yeah, I was, I was wondering about that. That's pretty powerful, man. It's going to kick some butt. It's going to cause lots of fun for you. At least you're the one who created it. So if uh, it does give you hassles, the only person that you um, you can complain to is yourself. 
Uh, I have created some very, very powerful magic items, particularly for higher end play. And I'm always amazed at um, how well my players remember all of the functions of that magic item. Not only do they remember all the functions of that magic item, they do not want to get rid of them. So every time they come across something else, they're like, no, it's not as good. So you agree. Yeah, I wasn't trying to be a dick, Aaron. If, if you thought I was trying to be a dick about my comment, that wasn't really the intention at all. Um, but yeah, when you make your own magic items, it's there's always a, a good side and a bad side to it. You make stuff that your players like and don't want to give it up, and they tend to wind up being significantly more powerful than they were before. Right, it's that. Um, Cy Morris, how's it going? I think you should open your chat up to DMing in general. Cy, I think you are right. And, and even though only you have responded with a comment based off yesterday's uh, live stream on the Lost Mine of Fandelva, I think you are right. I think that's the best thing to do. I just started DMing and couldn't use the LMOP, therefore general advice may be maybe using Lost Mind of Fandel just as a tool, for example. Yeah, look, I totally get it. So it makes a lot of sense. Do you know, even if people want to talk about stuff that's unrelated to the Lost Mind of Fandelva during those Q&As, I would have answered that your questions anyway. Um, when people ask me questions unrelated to the topic that I'm talking about, particularly near the end, once I've done my presentation, and since there's no presentation with that, I usually answer it all the questions I can if I'm capable of doing so. So for the future, when you're watching any of my live streams, doesn't matter what the topic is, if it's if there's a question you want to ask near the end that's unrelated to that, you can still ans ask those questions and I will probably still answer those questions for you, okay? Uh, Aaron, you made a magic eight skull. What's a magic eight skull? Uh, has a gem that gives random answer to a yes or no question. Ah, oh, I like that one. That's um, that's like the eight ball, isn't it? You know the uh, well, I don't know what you call it. We don't have them here in New Zealand, but I know there's a a thing that looks like a a black ball that you roll that gives out answers, and it's either yes or no. You ask the question. You, it's all really random, right? It's not really um related to actual. The magic eight ball. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's what I was trying to talk about. Sorry about that. I'm not quite as versed up on that sort of stuff. Okay, all right. I'm going to shake my black, shake my black, shake my black. It's certainly looking very black now, black and shiny. And I'll squeeze out a bit more black. I should have grabbed some more black when I went into the shop. Um... I also bought myself, I couldn't help myself, I bought myself some more miniatures, particularly since people had been so nice with the super chats, so I bought myself, uh, what was it, treasure, uh, treasure piles, there's a whole lot of deep cuts treasure piles, so I bought that, and I also picked up an Umber Hulk, I think um, Kyle in the store, one of the store um, people, was talking about the beholder. And I said, you haven't spotted the beholder. And I said, well, there's no beholder, so how can I spot a beholder that doesn't exist? And he said, oh, I need to restock. And I was like, well, I'm here, but you didn't restock, so I can't buy it. So what's going on, mate? <laughs> it's a bit weird. Uh, Aaron, I like putting items in that encourage role play. I think that's a great idea. Do you know, some of the best magic items I have seen... Some of the funniest and most interesting that I've seen are in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. I did a video on that topic. Um, but man, the, that uh, cloak of billowing um, is just hilarious. There's heaps and heaps of them that are really, really funny. Sorry guys, I'm out of the screen. You can't see what's going on. But yeah, it's, uh, it's weird how uh, magic items can be super fun. Although I, I know that players occasionally will view these as like junk magic items and they're not very impressed, but the, they are they're really cool. I like them. They were, and almost all of them are common magic items. I don't think there's that many um, uncommon stuff. It's not that powerful. Uh, Aaron, I uh, like putting them in the end of the... Hey, have a couple of sets that come out recently. 
Oh, what's that? A couple of sets. Yeah, there. I think um, I've noticed apparently that the the deep cuts, unpainted miniatures, and the because you can see what you're getting. It's in a blister pack, right? And the Nozzlers miniatures are getting super popular. Apparently, where I am at, well, not really where I'm at, because Auckland's like an hour drive away and 50k, so it's not close. But the deep cuts and um, Nozzlers are really popular. Apparently, they are disappearing off the shelf super fast. And um, Kyle was laughing when I said that I, um, I live stream and talk while I'm painting, and he said, Seriously, people show up to watch grass grow? And I said, well, people go and watch um, cricket, so why not? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But it's not that, you know, I noticed a few people have explained to me that it's the chat that's really the bit that draws them. And um, a lot of people will paint along while I'm painting and talking. And they just listen. So... There is a place for it. We, you just don't get enough um, live stream painting from, uh, what's it, um, Blanco. Blanco's really good at painting and fairly quickly too. But he, he doesn't do and put them up very often. I, I know why it is. It's just, it's the sometimes the technical hassle of doing a live stream and it's not very clean. You know, if you wind up sort of, and he, he concentrates very, very hard while he's painting. Whereas I'm doing something that's supposed to be super, super easy in comparison. <clears throat> DM Bob Ross. Nightwatch, how's it going? Is that your name? Your, uh, your DM name? DM Bob Ross. You'll have to explain. Give me the story. I have time. We've only been at it for a little while. So there's, there's plenty of time to talk about it. Ugh. Get in there. Get, get in. Do you know when there's like a, a one place I should have painted inside the mouth well before I got to this point, but I haven't, so it's too late now. <laughs> oh, paint, go on. This is, see, I water it down, it goes in. Sometimes you water it down too much, paint doesn't stick. Oh, what's that? Um, Aaron? Bob Ross, let's paint some happy trees. Oh, I, you, I don't understand. I'm still lost. Is Bob Ross a online streaming painter or online painter who paints happy trees? Don't have anything against that. Is that what you guys are talking about? <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. I've been um, reading through... I, I was I was almost willing not to touch the book, but I have been reading through um, Tomb of Annihilation. I'm on to about page 160. Oh my gosh, that that adventure! All it's going to do is just carve players up. It's utterly brutal. I think um, Chris Perkins has decided that he needed to make something that was even more vile than the Tomb of Horrors and. Just the way that uh, those traps operate are just insidious. Insidious. It can make a dungeon master super unpopular. Which means I'm definitely going to try and run it at some time if I can find somebody willing to put up with it. Ah <laughs> uh, dear. Um, okay, I, I'm joking. Kind of. No, I'm still going to do it. Anyway. The guy with the afro that painted on TV. Ah, oh, okay. And that's Bob Ross. Uh, Nightwatch. Nah, just the the mini painting um, live streams. People watch Bob uh, Ross constantly. Makes sense to have popular mini painting live streams. I think that live stream is one of the areas that a lot of our channels have not fully understood. And what I know what they do is they put it on Twitch and they'll put it on... Um, for their their patrons you know because their patrons are paying them money to do content and so it's a it's probably a, a, a much bigger amount of money than the adsense revenue they get from youtube <clears throat> 
And so that probably can, you know, save all that sort of stuff for them. But I still think there's a place for it. Aaron, a long time ago, a long time ago, you'll have to explain. Okay, so Bob Ross was a long time ago. Now I understand. Now you almost lost me, mate. Almost got confused. Um, Slice of Scott, how's it going, Slice of Scott? Planning on stealing the dinosaur racing bit from Tomb of Horrors, our uh, Tomb of um, Annihilation. <clears throat> Why would you not? The the dinosaur racing seems like a really good idea. Years ago, I had uh, when I was running the Isle of Dread or Island of Dread, which is an old adventure. Ran it for Dungeons and Dragons 5e because I didn't really think it was that hard to sort of do, and super fun. Uh, we had a stampede of dinosaurs. I thought, well, it's a dinosaur island. Stampeding dinosaurs. Got to happen. So that was really fun. I can imagine what a dinosaur race would be like. It would be great. <clears throat> be the toast of the town with your players. Racing dinosaurs. What could be better? Reminds me of that uh, ridiculous movie, um, Aliens and Cowboys. They tried to combine uh, two things that are super popular, like couple of decades ago and um, would have worked back then it didn't work now Valley of um, Guanji I think it's called try that cowboys and dinosaurs and it's um, they, I think they went cowboys and aliens <laughs> try to update it still didn't work <laughs> uh, dear Aaron what do you got um, I put it on twitch but they upload our episodes as soon as it's over. Okay, that's that's your live streaming for your game, right? It's a uh, it's a it's a long process uploading, you know, hours and hours of. Uh, I mean, it's not like it's a lot of work, uh, apart from the metadata and so forth and the thumbnails. But it's a long time to have to fiddle around. I don't know how YouTube manages to um, to cope with the sheer volume of video that goes up. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting really quite annoyed with the ads, particularly when they stick those um, two ads running back to back. You know, you've got an ad there, and I've got no control of that sort of thing. I don't think any of the channels do. I know it's an experiment being done by YouTube, but it's just annoying. You just want to skip it, right? If, it, if it's a standard ad at a certain place that you can't skip, um, or even better, you know, it's only 15 seconds or 30 seconds is kind of pushing it, um, and it's skippable, and you know, most people will watch the ad for 15 seconds, or even 30 seconds, you know, while they're doing something else like having something to eat or whatever. But yeah, these back-to-back -back ads just drive you nuts. I wish they'd stop doing it. <clears throat> okay, right, I think I'm, I've managed to not get too much black paint all over me, which is amazing, and I've almost covered all the tentacles, there's so much area to paint, and it's all in fiddly locations. For those of you who are wondering what brush I'm using, I'm using a really cheap, nasty, um, Chinese Emporium, $2 shopish brush to put the paint on like this. So uh, it's not a fancy, expensive brush at all. It is just a cheapie. Because I don't see any point in doing it any other way. Not with just bulk paint going on. And I'm trying to do it quickly. I would really like to get this finished today. Just, that would be my desire. I don't see why I couldn't, but you never know, right, with these things. If you, you miss a spot, you've got to go back over it. Okay, all right. And if the paint doesn't quite go on, there's another reason. Okay. La -do 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 -do. I think that's the last tentacle that I missed. Uh, okay, all right. I'm going to wash out that brush. I'm pretty sure I got most of the black where I needed it to be. If you guys spot any areas that seem a little bit um, lacking in black paint, you let me know. I think there is quite a few. 
The only, only reason we use Twitch is because Amazon Prime members can subscribe to one channel each month for free, so it costs nothing to them but supports the streamer. Well, that's probably a sensible thing. I have got a Twitch um, channel. I just can't, I just can't use YouTube and Twitch at the same time. It would just overload my internet, so I don't, I don't do it. And um, I was sort of running my games as a Twitch option to avoid uh, my players demonetizing my channel because of their language. But yeah, that's that's really the only thing that was going on. Right, okay. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna let that dry and I'll come back. Come back to him. I'll let that dry and I'll grab something else to work on while I'm waiting for it to dry. I'll make sure I put it in the sun so it dries faster. Here we go. Slice of Scott, do you have any DM trademarks? Um, a certain encounter or style your players associate with you? Uh, to be fair, Slice of Scott, my players have associated me with rolling extremely low. That is what I am known for. Uh, whenever I roll with my monsters, is rolling ones and twos consistently. They love it. In fact, it seems to be the, I, I kind of suspect sometimes that's the only reason they like playing at my table. I'm, I'm, it's probably not right. It's probably not true at all. Uh, but yes, there's a treasure chest in front of you guys. I bought myself some brown, so I thought I'd try it out. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm really known for. And the other thing I'm known for is uh, doing crazy stuff. Things that other people would probably not even contemplate doing. Um, and so that's, I think, part of the reason why a lot of people have liked playing in my games. But, you know, I don't charge either, so that's a big big bonus, right? <laughs> I don't cheat. Oh, it's going to cost you money. That's, uh, that's always a big selling point for a lot of people, right? Okay, what have we got here? How's it going, Nicholas? How are you? How's your day? Hopefully it's going well. Mine's going pretty well so far, which is always nice. I grab my little dry brush. I've got some brown here, and we're going to try and put it on. I don't know. I'm always a little bit unsure about just what's going on here. It's uh, where can I just? I'll do it on the side. Okay, that's good enough. I can always use the, the wash to sort it out in the end, right? That's, so don't get too worried about it. Don't get too worried about it, Fred. Just get the paint on. Get the paint on. Oh, oh, it's so nice to not have to mix a brown. I don't know why I didn't just buy the brown. I know why I didn't buy the brown straight away. I didn't buy the brown because I couldn't afford it. <laughs> I had to sort of wait, give it time. Now I don't have to mix it. Yay! Uh, what's you going to paint? Well, as it happens, I'm painting a roper, uh, but I'm just waiting for, I'm turning it as I'm doing this, waiting for the black to dry. And I thought, well, while I'm doing that, I will put a quick coat over this treasure chest, get some brown on it, and make it a little bit more exciting. just while the paint is dry. And that is almost that. There we go. Let's get the brown in, the, in there. It's always the tough, tricky part to get it. It's just in the cracks, in the little crevices. Aaron, I like using shapeshifters, doppelgangers, hags, rakasha, arkanaloths, etc. Well, they are very deceptive, right? Those are the, the creatures that get up to a lot of mischief, to be fair. There's a lot of mischief. All right, that's that one done. We'll put that out of the way. And back to the Ropa. Mr. Ropa has returned. Uh, they all know it and like to look for the quirks. Ah, okay. 
Nicholas, well, well, as always, here we go. I'm not sure what it means, but it doesn't matter. Let's get the Roper sorted. And we're gonna, I'm gonna go with um, a brown terracotta and then a gray to make everything else sort of stick out. Um, I feel like that's probably the smartest way to deal with it. I'm certainly hoping that is. Oh, more brown. Okay, all right. Squeeze out. Obviously, need to use a lot more brown than that. Okay, let's see. It's really hard to get into all the crevices. All right. Uh, actually, should I? There's just a couple of patches that need black, and I might just do that now while I can. I use a smaller brush and if I water it down and just do a spot paint with the black really quick. Sorry guys. Spot paint. Just in the areas where it needs it. Spot paint. Fill in the gaps. And then we'll go back to the brown. God, is it still not watery enough? Yeah, okay. Is the delay, is the delay on the video, but you ask how I am? Yeah, sorry about the delay on the video. It'll be because uh, I don't, yeah, the, the internet's not great here, and they're still working on it. And when I'm uh, live streaming a uh, moving picture, that's always the, the hardest time for my internet to cope with. Let's grab a bit more water, thin it down a fraction more. Spot paint, spot paint. I don't want it too thin, otherwise it just bleeds away. Okay, that's that bit. Slice of Scott. I'm a new DM and am curious as to the what makes for a memorable experience. What kinds of things last in a player's memory? The things that have lasted in my player's memory, look, I'm not going to give you, because it's always different for everybody, but I'll tell you the things that my players have always mentioned and talked about. Uh, in terms of my dungeon mastering. Uh, the day that I decided to have a giant, like a gargantuan sized rabbit with a hundred rabbits and they came across it and they were terrified, they didn't want to fight it, I made it quite clear that fighting it might be just a really bad idea for the group and the rabbit uh, was able to be communicated with, with by a, a forest gnome. That forest gnome um, talked to the, the mother rabbit and discovered that she was waiting for uh, a babysitter. So they decided to babysit the baby rabbits. Those are the things that I've had happen in my game. So they spent a whole session trying to manage a hundred baby rabbits while the mum went out to find food and just have a break. So babysitting a giant rabbit, um, facing a, a, a an old wizard's tower and that wizard's tower was actually a giant mimic they didn't realize it was a giant mimic and inside it had a whole lot of other mimics if that makes sense so i i did just do stuff that is just utterly mad sometimes and they had to escape the giant mimic otherwise it got eaten and uh because i didn't really think about what would happen they discovered that the mimic moved so slow that they could just move away because it moved like 10, 10 feet per turn, uh, move away and shoot it. And that's, they just ran around in circles in the clearing, shooting this giant thing, and it finally just died once they got out of it. Uh, what are the other things that have happened? Oh, I was running an old adventure called uh, Behind the Magic Mirror, which is based off um, uh, Alice in Wonderland's Through the Looking Glass and Gary Gygax uh, uh, had 
basically copied that pretty much included a lot of things that were already in the, um, the original um, story and what I did is I included uh, a gazebo that was alive and I based it off a beholder and it absolutely smashed the snot out of the players decimated them and they but one of them would not leave it let it go they decided they wanted to go back disguise themselves as somebody else um, started up a um, a very intimate relationship with Greg the gazebo rubbed oil into it and while it, Greg was sleeping burnt it alive those are the sorts of things that have happened at my game that I've had people comment on um, so for you it's going to be different okay my suggestion to you is go go nuts you know they're playing Dungeons and Dragons they're after fantasy they're not really after the mundane so do something that's fantastic fantastic locations um, the curse of strat adventure that I ran um, I'm known for that particular one for the sheer number of players that died in it but I didn't let them play a new character they had to continue with the same character and so I've had them play ghosts and revenants and I did that near the end though um, they played I think they played um, wound up in the bodies of uh, other people who were in the location uh, who were sort of you know who had died but their bodies hadn't been destroyed um, they played I think one of them wound up as a giant gelatinous cube uh, for a short period of time another one wound up as a shit monster um, I've had players find themselves transformed to goblins and had to seek out the the witch who did that so yeah fantastic is what makes a, a dungeon master stand out as far as I'm concerned but every dungeon master is different does that answer your question Aaron for me the awesome experiences always occur when players roll play so I give them uh, the chance also listen to what they say out of uh, character yes absolutely I want to kill a character make make a, a whiz um, save <laughs> do, you, do you know I've had some players who have insisted on making intelligence checks for things and I, that just are quite clear that it's a bad idea and I said oh I want to make an intelligence check for my character they pick up the dice and I said seriously what's your intelligence for your character it's a 10 well you've got average intelligence why if you can figure it out why would your character not be able to figure it out it's it's very very simple and they said, no, no, I want to make a saving throw. I was like, fine, you go for it. And um, players will do things that just sh surprise you. And um, I've always found that the uh, the most absurd stands out the most for people. Things that will stand out are always total party kills. Not necessarily a great great thing when they do stand out, but they certainly do stand out for people. Uh, da, 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 da. slice of Scott ha sounds amazing thanks for the advice and inspiration you're welcome uh, can I think of anything else that I've done you know when people ask me these questions off the top of my head I can't sort of produce them but um, this there's a lot of stuff <clears throat> had a whole adventure based off um, the party talking to and communicating with some undead uh, and these undead were zombies and so forth and I based them off the characters from the Adams family and the Munsters and it wasn't about killing these ghosts or zombies or whatever it was all about just communicating with them and solving their problems that certainly has stood out for a lot of my players and the time that one of my players decided they wanted to find out if their their character was capable of um, surviving a, a barrage of about eight red dragons with his monk he said I can't die I'm a monk man uh, this evasion is awesome plus all my damage resistant stuff there's no way you can kill me and um, he survived the first volley of eight dragon breaths but not the second one since he certainly couldn't move faster than the dragons my players often generate the, the, the funny things in a game Aaron uh, have ancestral guardians 
but that uh, that the first time they raged, I had one of my uh, her family. She uh, still in a life showing a protective. Okay, okay. Rage, rage, rage. Barbarians are always um, quite funny. I had, yeah, and I had another player who insisted. He keeps going on about how hard it was to die in Dungeons and Dragons 5e, and um, everybody at the table just looked at me, and I just smiled. And what was funny was not so much what I did. He put himself in jeopardy, his character in jeopardy, and the rest of the party, when uh, the when trouble started, they all ran away and left them to it. <laughs> that was actually quite funny. I thought that was hilarious. Okay, so I've got the barmaid. While I'm waiting for Mr. Uh, Roper to dry a little bit more, I'm going to grab the barmaid. You know what I've discovered and realised? I've forgotten about... The problem with anything that has flesh is you can't put more than one coat on with it um, at a time and you have to leave it like a day I've found. If you leave it a day you give it plenty of time to dry up and harden before you put the next coat on otherwise it gets tacky um, and it gets blobby and just, just nasty. So now that I've finally remembered that I'm going to apply just one coat of uh, this flesh with just a tiny bit of white to help fill it out because I know the white's a lot uh, thicker so if I do that I'm hoping that'll solve a lot of my problems with getting the flesh onto her, her skin but you're only going to see her once during this live stream and that will be that I just want to get mixed in and we just apply my really bad eyesight because I, I was like I'm sure I've painted uh, females before what am I doing wrong and then I, re I remembered I would had to apply like 10 coats really thin coats before you build up enough flesh color otherwise you've got to have a really good paint and this the Vallejo are nice, but um, they're very, very thin, so it takes a lot of paint layers to get what you want out of it, unless you're using something like white or black. So we'll we'll try this, see if this works. If this works, that's good news. And just do her arms first. I'm not talking as much or looking at the chat it's because I am trying to get it right it's even in the thin areas the paint just doesn't go on as much as you would want it's just so thin yep there we go. And right now, let's deal with the face. Hopefully I don't get a bubble going on. If I get a bubble going on on the face, it's going to look terrible. And I have mixed a little bit of white with it to make it a bit thicker. There was another flesh colour available that I could have picked up, but I didn't grab it because I... I just wind up with way too many different colours. And you don't really know how well a paint is going to flow on until you've used it on your miniature right that's what I found and that's that I'd have to go over here again at some point but not today let's just get the skin on Right, that's got the, the paint on, I'm pretty sure. And I'll just give that a clean off. And am I satisfied? Yep, good enough. Let's put her out of the way for today. We'll come back to her again. I did buy some green to deal with the dress, but I won't do the dress right now. Let's get Mr. Roper sorted out. Mr. Roper, where are you? 
is my brush. And here's the roper. And a little bit of paint spray going on. Oh, and I need to take off my shirt. Uh, jump up, that's getting warm in here. Sorry guys. Bear with me, I'm getting there. And a drink of water, and then it's back onto brown. Back onto the brown, oh, it's brown. Here we go. Really hard shake, shake it. And we're gonna to have to use quite a bit, I think. Right, we are ready. Let's get this thing, change its color. And I'm going to apply it fairly liberally. Although I won't go too silly, just enough to get it sort of going. There we go. She's changing colour now. Okay. I'll move it forward a little bit more so you guys can get a better, better view. Ha ha! This is now starting to look like something. Just a little bit of brown and black. A playing liberally with the brush. And around the jaw. And the bow base of it over here. Uh, okay, so I'm um, I need to move forward or backward. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. It's in the right space. I'm alright. Just keep my hand pretty much in the same place while I'm putting the paint on. Yeehaw! Finally my roper is starting to look more like a roper. This has been sitting around for so long waiting to be painted. What is our time? We're oh, 13 minutes. Can I get it done in 13 minutes? Of course I can get it done in 13 minutes. It's going to happen. It was getting the black on the first part. That was, that was the hard bit. Mel, how's it going Mel? How are you? Uh, you're not done the roper yet? Yes, another big question mark. I hadn't done the roper because nothing was actually um, drying where I was. And I didn't really want to paint them unless I was online. So I've been le I've left all of my monsters that I made uh, unpainted. They're all sitting in on my desk as it happens. Just waiting. Waiting for the day. Hence, that's why it's not finished. I finished mine, used it in a campaign and have it collecting dust in the cabinet. And you inspired me to make mine. Yes, I know, Mel, I know. For those of you who don't know, Mel uh, has made a whole bunch of miniatures based off stuff that I've made. Um, and he's got them up on YouTube. Um, and they look really, really cool. Haven't, you haven't, I haven't seen you around for a long time, Mel. How's your games going anyway? All right. Ropers are super fun. Really deadly. <laughs> okay. All right, where's some more brown? There it is. Give it a good shake. Uh, Nicholas, so Roper, 1,800 of XP and rank five on challenge rating. Yes, yes it is. It's a lot of experience if you are the right level. It's not a lot of experience if you're 20th level. But it's a lot of experience if you're a lower level. Um, <laughs> ropers are one of those things that, if done right and placed in the right environment, they they are extremely difficult to manage. But if the fight goes the player's way, 
they are an, impossible to um, to get clear because they just move so slow. So you have to have like an escape point for them. Otherwise, they're dead as a doorknob. And there's not much you can do about it. Um, I keep missing you by a couple of hours. If only the earth was flat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, time zones are a hassle, eh? Yeah, I am getting better, Mel, with my timing. I am usually pretty good with where I time myself. On my days off, um, 12 o'clock's fine. But on my days when I work, I've got to do it at 8 o'clock here in New Zealand. And I know nobody's awake, you know. This might be somebody awake in Bangladesh or um, part of South America or Italy. Uh, I wind up ch chatting to a whole bunch of people from different parts of the world. Which is good. I like it. It's good. Um, the language barrier can be a bit tricky at times because they have to talk to me and I struggle with the English language. So can you imagine trying to communicate with me when English is not your first language? <coughs> it's got to be awful. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to kill in the right environment. Um, it's easy to, to take out if, it, if they get the drop on it, which they shouldn't do. Players, if the players get the drop on a roper, there's something going on seriously. You, you, you're either doing something wrong or they've done something incredibly right. They're actually playing their group like a Navy SEAL team, which is what you should be doing if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons. Navy SEAL team! Navy SEAL team! Okay. Uh. Sorry guys, just making sure, I keep checking to make sure uh, that I haven't shifted myself out of the screen. Not super helpful when I do that, I realise. And that is just going on super easy. That is great. And I like this this brown. This brown is awesome. Either that or the fact that it's going onto the, the black paint is... No, I like the brown. The brown is my friend. Uh, what's that, Aaron? I have a hard time remembering to use the whole word rather than the American short hand. Oh, barbarian. Barb, barb, barbarian. Ba 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 ba. Yep. Just takes longer to write, correct? It's alright, I'll figure it out. Okay, so uh, where am I looking here that needs more brown? Some of the tentacles still need a bit more. Just to get a bit more, a bit of thicker layer. Areas that are missing. I don't need to have a huge amount because it's not really, your cave is not really brown, is it? It's more a grayish, rocky color. Well, I suppose you could say some rocks are brown. Okay, all right. I use the last of the brown up on the base, and then we'll and some of the other locations which I've completely missed. Apparently, there's lots of them, and then we're ready to move on to the next color. Uh, and I will give it a little bit of time to to set and just grab something else while I'm waiting for it to dry, and then we'll move on to the next color, which will be the terracotta. And then once the terracotta's on, it's time to make up some grey. And I don't think I bought a grey, so I have to make the grey. Yeah. Yeah. She's good. Alright, that's nice. That's done. Okay, so drink of water time. And we'll put you in the sun. Is there sun left in my office now? It's a question. There we go. Over there. Right, right there in the sun. Uh -oh. 
I wouldn't worry about it, Aaron. It's all cool, man. All right, so what do I want to do? I want to try to put a bit of silver on that chest, I think. Let's grab the oily steel. Now, what's this? I started mine as a stalagmite on the on the floor and had it climb on the ceiling and hide among the stalactites to confuse my group. Good man, good man. That's the way to go. Do that. That'll certainly confuse them. It's the best way to use it. All right, oily steel. Uh, and my brush for that is going to have to be the very, very small one, which I had a second ago, if I can find you. There it is. And let's grab a bit of paint off there. And we'll just start applying. Uh, okay, there we go. Stay within the lines, stay within the lines. I know you really can't see what's what's going on because it's not really clear. The, the oily steel is quite dark. It's not really doesn't stand out quite as much as some of the other paints. So therefore, I'm probably going to have to put other colours over it to make it sort of pop and stand out. And there's the lock. That is not quite going on the way I'd hoped, but that's all right. Right, get all the bands, color it in. Do -do 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 -do. Keep an eye on that roper, see how it's drying. Give it a turn, get the other side. It's like Baking my uh, my miniatures, eh? I'm baking them, preparing them for the next layer. Right, let's get that there. And a little bit more. Let's need to get that. Brush it clean, it's getting too hard. There we go. Stalactite, stalactite, stalact something. Oh, I'm sorry if I'm not talking very much right now. It's just it's fiddly work getting the, um, the bands coloured. Particularly since it's there's a lot of them. Okay, and then the other side. brush get in there get in there you little doggy I'm hoping that I'll be able to use these treasure chests in future games that I run but also in some of the future videos that I do I've actually worked on a lot of stuff I just it just hasn't been published that's all or it's half finished. I've got a lot of half finished stuff. And was it somebody um, asked for advice on how to deal with um, people who go off topic during their session, side uh, conversations and so forth. And I was like, you know, it's, it's, it's a never ending problem. I'll do a video on the topic. It never goes away. It's always there. Unless you get the right sort of people who, you know, like, the the only thing they or everybody cares about is just playing Dungeons and Dragons. Sometimes you can get lost in the, the off-topic stuff. 
Well, proving that you remember the words from a poem. I've got a friend who um, recites entire poems while we're playing. <laughs> it's, it's quite amazing, but it's also really, really um, strange and a little bit frightening that somebody could remember every single word. But I keep forgetting that I've got a bunch of people who have photographic memories in my home group. They literally remember everything they come across. Okay, so let's see if I can get the top part of it covered. Yep, there we go. These little treasure chests are, are cool, but they are fiddly. I will um I'll show you guys some of the um the miniatures that I the bought the, like the treasure chests and the, the umber hulk sometime but they'll probably be part of a like a painting video rather than um, a separate video in itself and then a painting video I'll probably just bang them open when I'm ready and then show you then okay all right and where's my paint go I think this will be the last side that I paint silver and then we'll go back to the roper because the roper should be well and truly dry by now. I don't think there should be anything that isn't, isn't relatively hard. Well, hard enough. It's not like I'm painting flesh, so flesh is a lot harder to deal with. There's plenty of room for imperfections on a roper, so anybody can paint it. It's not a big deal, right? And oh, cool. it's weird you get a paint that's thick but thin so it's thick paint but when it goes on it covers thinly strange I realize but very true And am I happy with that? I don't know. Oh, hang on, guys. I'm just going to just turn it out of out of the camera view so I can just get a good, decent line on it where I can see what's going on. Okay, that's it. Let's get rid of that. Let's bring back the rope up. Mr. Roper is what the reason why we're here in the first place, right? Okay, so I did the brown. And it's time to move on to the next colour, which we're going to use the terracotta, what's it called? Tan earth. So if we use the flat earth, we're going to use the tan earth, which is a little bit lighter in colour. I'm going to put that on a lot less of it. But it should help things stand out a bit more. I'm talking like I know what I'm talking, but really, I don't know that I do. Here we go. Let's give it a go. All right, that doesn't look too bad. And my brush. Let's just get it on. And then try to not too thick. And then just brush over the miniature fairly quickly. It should be pretty obvious if it's working right. You guys will be able to see the, the difference. Even on even on my uh, camera. I can see the difference. That's good. Good, 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 good. That's working out fine. And I'm just going to just brush off a bit more of that. Terracotta. Go around the base. There we go. Get the angles right. Okay. 
ラララトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥトゥreally want a lot on the um, tentacles so I'm going to avoid doing that as much as I can. I might just do a little bit on their tips. Um, light bearing side. Okay, that's that color. Right, so there's not a lot of paint there. I'll put it back in the sun and I'm going to start mixing up a gray to put over that. Oh, the water went up my nose. Uh, slice of Scott, are there any Adventurers League modules that are must haves? No. No, I would say there aren't. <laughs> Sorry. Um, to be to be fair, the, I mean all of the pre-published stuff that you you can get are all Dungeons and Dragons adventures legal. Uh, all those pre-published adventures. Lost Mine of Fandelva would still stand out as being the best, but you're not talking about you're talking about the expeditions and the. The adventures that you can uh, purchase now uh, for a, a price that uh, Wizards of the Coast has. Um, I, I just don't really like them. The 30 pages usually, they have everything there. Um, but honestly, they're just not that good. I just don't like them. They're not that fun. I don't really, you know, that my players ever felt found that they were that fun either. So I just don't understand why I would even bother with those things. Um, that's just my view. I mean, you know, it's it's how I see it. Not everybody sees it the same way. But I just don't like them. I think they are awful and boring and um, they're not polished. And I know a few of the people who have written them. And I, 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 nothing against them, but their stuff is just not worth 
uh, somebody's money. There's so many people making third party content now. So many people. You just, I just don't see why they even bother with that sort of thing. I know what it is. It's, you know, to stick with a storyline, they're sort of right within a parameter. Uh, a few of them are starting to crop up in the published ventures in terms of the creators. Their input is always there to a, a little bit of an extent. But still, I don't like it. It's not my thing. Okay, my well, McGray is um, pretty much sorted. I've put that back on the screen for you guys so you can see what's going on. I'm just mixing in the last of the grey. It's a, it's a fairly dark grey so for those of you who are wondering uh, what sort of texture it's going to have. So I'm going to have to be fairly gentle with the amount of grey I put on, otherwise the brown's just going to disappear. I suspect that the brown might just disappear anyway, but it doesn't matter. We'll get it there. We'll get there. Okay, so brush on small amounts, brush off. Oh, just all right, let's just stroke gently. Just to see what it's doing. Okay. Doesn't look too bad. I feel like that's not bad at all actually. Okay, let's keep going. The grey is going on. I don't know if you can necessarily see it because it's, it's so subtle. It's very subtle. And again, yeah, go. Starting at the base, working my way up. There we go. So we're going to get a mixture of brown and grey going on. Okay, so let's do it again. It's there. And there. Up through here. There. And we'll attack the um, tentacle area as well now. I don't know if we can necessarily call it attack, but I'm going to put some paint there. That's the plan. And I want to go sort of not too crazy. Wonderful. Oh, gosh. Almost, always so many steps to painting something. 
Okay. All right, that's the gray, and then we're gonna lighten it up again. It's quite a bit of white there. And where's my little brush for mixing it? I had it a second ago, I don't know where I've gone. I might find, grab that one. Oh no, there it is, I found it, I found it, it's over there. That's going to be nice. That's going to be nice. There we go. And That worked. Cool. Let's do it again. And we're going to have to go that way. And then we'll do the tips of the we'll just sort of go along the top. Yeah, there, 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 there. Come on. Okay, that looks all right. Um, will I need that again? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not too sure. I'm going to leave it. We're going to tackle the eye. Uh, what colour should I make the eye? That's the question. What colour do I paint the eye? Um, a big blue, beautiful blue eye. Why not that? Okay, we don't need to thin it. Good. Okay. Or should I have gone white and then blue? I feel like I should have gone white and then blue. It's just. I know what I'll do. I will close that up. I will grab some white wherever you are. Um, slice of Scott, what do you got here? There'd be a suitable Halloween decor decoration to scare the kids. Yeah, we might do it. We reckon. Okay, there we go. Get 
the white going. I've got to get the white into the teeth anyway, so let's let's just tackle the teeth. And we will probably need a little bit of water for this stuff, so it's it's pretty thick. And now this is this is the tricky bit bit for me because I've got to paint so that you guys can see what's going on and still get the paint in the right place. And painting around the mouth is the hardest bit. It's a little bit on the, um, I realize it's all a little bit on the, the bright white side, but I have that gray which I'm going to use. As long as it doesn't dry up in the time that I'm doing this. Okay, more, more water. that, tip of that. Ah. Right. Brushes. Need a wash out. Let's do it again. And water is it's made it way too thin now. Done. Let's see if it goes on. No, it's too thin. Okay, more white. And we're running along. What's new? Suitably scary. So if I turn it upside down, I can maybe get at the other bits. Getting in there is very, very tricky. Okay, so that's got the white there, and I'm just going to give that a quick wipe. And I'm going to try to, um, I don't know how successful or what it's going to look like, but I really want to have a little bit of white around the eye. Might have to go back over it though, with the blue. Or the brown, now I've moved into the brown zone. Brush is just not small enough, that's what it is. 
my hands are not steady enough. Clean that brush off. Uh, I don't need brown left I can use. No, it's all dried up. Let's grab a little bit of the light stuff. Just tidy up that mess. Um, had to step out for a bit looking uh, work stuff. I'm back and uh, it's looking good. Okay, cool. Slice of Scott. Have you seen the BBC series of the Musketeers? No, I haven't actually. What's that like? Is any good? Well, I've got uh, many versions, movies, versions of that story. Many, many, many versions. <laughs> so, I'm a fan, definitely. Okay. Right, so I'm going to a smaller brush because that one is just not going to do it for the last little bit. So I'm going to go to the smaller brush and see if I can get on there. Because this is the standard brush. Surgical standard. Let's go for layers. It's got a little bit more point to it. Um, let's grab the white first. Move my brush too fast and I scored it on somewhere else. That's always nice. I've got to re go over it. Great. Okay, and a little bit about that. Let's get the ice sorted out. job and uh, now blue had blue before smaller brush make it work uh, slice of Scott haven't seen it just saw it advertised oh, okay I don't really get a chance to watch a lot of TV and um, there we go there's the blue Let's get the blue sorted out on this eye. I'll stay still, Fred. I not keep anything still, can I? No. Asking way too much. Alright. There's the eye. Ah. Oh, that was hard. Aaron, 
Ward of the Dragon Queen has a rope in it. Every time I run it by my players, feed the, uh, the dragon eggs to the roper and offer to bring it more food. <laughs> Why would you not do that? Seems like a sensible thing to do. Brilliant. Okay, there's the eye. Let's finish the teeth because the teeth look a little bit on the pristine um, side. So we'll stroke just around the outside of it, down the bottom near the, where it meets the gum. Probably putting a wash over the um, over there would be the smart thing to do, but I'm not going to do that today. Just none of this paint's dry enough to really pull that off. I just want it making everything bleed. And a little bit more. Okay, I think that's mostly done. Okay, all right. Push the cap back on that thing before I have a chance to spill it, which is definitely possible. And so the teeth are very, very white, and I would definitely put a wash over it, but I'm not going to do it now because it just wouldn't make any sense. Not with the paint as a uh, still pretty sort of um, soft and it might just make everything bleed but there's my roper uh, not really a difficult thing to paint a roper give it a good give it a spin on the catwalk this is my my new roper monster for those of you who want to uh, meet um, Rob the roper this is Rob the roper Rob would like to say thank you for showing up to my live stream and putting up with my poor conversation and watching me try to paint a miniature for about an hour and a half as it happens. <laughs> Aaron, you would like the uh, the roper to be ticked off on the Horde of the Dragon Queen? Well, you know, I think they, they've done the smart thing. I've seen more than a few groups tick it off. Well, I'm glad glad you think it's great stuff. I am I'm done for today, so if you liked this video, please hit the like button and share the video if you find, find somebody who's uh, interested in this sort of thing, by all means. Um, if you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button and the bell button to be notified when I go live. And I go live lots of times, and I publish new videos every once in a while. If you want to support my channel, you supported my channel by suffering through this hour and a half video. Recommend speeding it up. What is it? One and a half. I will sound fine as a chipmunk. Um, you might even be able to speed it up a little bit more. Um, I'm sure it will all sound perfectly fine if you decide to rewatch this. So watch more of my videos if you want to support me. Ah, oh, Shivan Zombie, how's it going? Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you want to support my channel, I don't do Patreon, but down in the description you'll find affiliate links to the Book Depository and Amazon where you can buy stuff online. And I get a small commission. You pay exactly the same price as you normally would. Blah, 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 blah. Just go through, through the link and buy stuff if you want to. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Uh, what else do I need to say? Oh, if you have any comments, since you're in the live stream, for those of you who are here, obviously you've had your chance to, to talk with me. <laughs> it's about to, about to end. I'm so sad. Um, otherwise, in the comment section later on, you can make a comment. Tell me what you think. Did you like it? Was the final result worth it? You tell me. And um, hey, where if I can find my dice? I don't know. Will I find my dice? Till next time, keep rolling those 20s. And stay away from the ropers. They're not good for you.